Happy Monday, everybody. It is 12-12 of 2016, and this is Stasha Erickson bringing the news that you need, because if they won't report it, then I will. So last Monday, we talked about fake news, and surprisingly, um, I, I got up pretty early Monday morning, and I'm 10, 11 hours ahead of the United States, and posted that article early Monday morning. You know, I thought it'd be kind of important, the fake news uh, this week, but I had no idea how much my little intuition Monday morning to talk about that um, was going to be dominated by the next week or so, or the past week. It's been crazy. Um, I'm well aware my channel is being attacked. Everybody I know that has a YouTube channel is being attacked. And I know for a fact that my views and my videos are being blocked. But that's okay, YouTube, because it's not just me. Even PewDiePie, the biggest YouTuber who's from Sweden and got the most subscribers on YouTube, 50 million subscribers, even his views have gone from like 3 million views down to 1 million view per video. And I know that sounds like, oh, poor guy. But when you're used to having 3 million views a day and suddenly you have one, you notice it. You know, maybe I'm used to seeing a couple thousand views and now I only see a couple hundred. It doesn't matter the numbers. It's that we're all being attacked. So because of that, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing, but I'm just going to take a little bit of the focus off of the fake news today, and I'm going to put it right back onto the real news. So I scanned the world media this morning, and boy, oh boy, did I find a doozy for all of you today. This is a very important article, and you know, <laughs> this is the type of article most people would consider would be fake news, but I have done three reference checks on this and it is absolutely true so let me get right to the goods here I'm gonna leave a link below in the description box of this video that I found on CNN yesterday and it says Chinese paleontologist Zing Lida made an amazing discovery at an amber market in Myanmar or Myanmar and guess what it was you guys Zing found the tail of a 99 million year old dinosaur preserved in amber. Oh yes, did you hear that right? The tail of a 99 million year old dinosaur preserved in amber. And so Zing said, I was not sure that the trader really understood how important this specimen was, but he did not pay, uh, he did not raise the price. So, in four, so apparently this guy goes into this market, finds this very rare thing, and says, Whoa, do you understand how important and how old this is? And the trader just said, you know, he didn't raise the price. So it makes you wonder, first of all, where the trader got this from, and if this is even more common than we may realize or have been told in the past. So it continued on to say that the tail belonged to a sparrow-sized dinosaur from the Kolu the <laughs> Koalurosaur group. So did you know that we had sparrow-sized dinosaurs? Is this something that you knew about? Could this be a Mandela effect? You know, many people have said that since the Mandela effect has been discovered that there's lots of strange species of animals that many people have never heard about popping up all over the world. Now, I'm not doubting that we had sparrow-sized dinosaurs. I'm just really excited about the fact that we had sparrow-sized dinosaurs. Um, I've always had this theory and had some very kind of deep um, spiritual visions throughout my years as a, being a spiritual teacher. And one of the many things that I kept receiving in my intuitive downloads about our past was that we really had come from birds. And there was, there's a lot of information about a race known as the carrion race. C-A-R-R-I-O-N, I believe is how it's spelled. And the carrion race were meant to be like, kind of like the first um, human hybrids. And it was a mixture between birds and humans. So again, this could be another story for another day. But if we have in fact found the tail of an original carrion being, these were truly meant to have been the first form of life on this planet anyway. So as we continue on with the article and I continued on watching the video, it, it continued on to say that close-up images of the specimen show feathers rather than scales. Feathers. 
you can even see the slide here um, zoomed in to the dinosaur's tail and it looks just like little feathers. And the researcher said, they're not quite the, the Godzilla style scaly monsters that we want that we once thought. So we find out almost every single day that we've been lied to about our past. We find out every single day we've been lied to about our history. Many people believe that science itself is a complete lie. Many, many people believe now that we're not even living on a globe. We're living on a flat earth. So if all of our life we've been told we came from reptiles, come to find out we might come from birds, what else will we discover about science that we thought we knew that we didn't? So as I continue to read on, it, it said that McKellar says it's the first time part of a mummified dinosaur skeleton has been found. You understand this, what they're saying? It is the first time part of a mummified dinosaur skeleton has been found. So apparently this has never happened before. And he continued on to say, it's a once in a lifetime find. The finest details are visible and in three dimensions. So we're not dealing with a theory. We're not dealing with a question. We are dealing with reality here. And what is the first thing that I thought about, of course, but Jurassic World or Jurassic Park. If my, my husband and I, when we saw this video, the first thing we thought about was Jurassic World and how they had found DNA in amber. It was actually dinor, uh, dinosaur DNA that they found in amber. Now, a few years ago, there was an article coming out from the Telegraph UK, and I will also give you guys a link to this, as well as the original article on ancient origins that talk about the dinosaur tail being found. But it talks about Jurassic Park is ruled out because dinosaur DNA could not survive in amber. So a few years ago, they're telling us it cannot survive. And then a few years later, they find this DNA and they say it's three-dimensional and perfectly preserved. So what does this mean for humanity? <laughs> Generally, I have found that when they tell us about something, and that means when they announce it to the whole world, that it's something that they, quote unquote, have already known about for a very, very long time. And they're finding a way to sneakily kind of present it to humanity. They use news sites like CNN to test out to see how people react. This is why they have a comment section on their YouTube channel and on their website itself. They are testing you. These are what you call kind of like a um, focus group <laughs> test on humanity. They want to see how people react when they're given this type of information. So I scrolled through some of the comments and I saw people saying, wow, CNN finally reporting an article that seems like it's not fake. Wow, CNN, you basically just told us that we're all going to die via um, our Jurassic World style. Fill in the, the blanks, go on and on and on, continue and think what this really could mean. So we've heard about human cloning. I've touched upon that a few times. It is not a conspiracy theory about human cl cloning. Humans have been cloned. Sheeps have been cloned. Dolly was the first sheep we all know that was cloned. So, again, if we line up all of the research science has been doing for the past couple of years, it would lead up to the fact that they have been trying to clone many, many, many things. So what makes us think that they would not clone a dinosaur? Particularly because of the fact that they mentioned that this is a once in a lifetime find. The finest details are all visible and in three dimensions. So perhaps in the past they told us that DNA could not survive in amber, but this is all a whole new ball game. And how would they know? How would they actually know if they had never found dinosaur DNA in amber until today? How would they know that it could not be cloned or recreated? They couldn't. So yet again, science would be lying to us because what is a theory? It is, you know, it's a hypothesis that is yet to be proven without research. So now they've found the tail. It's actually, it's actually, it was a bloody tail. There was blood on the tail when you read the article. Again, I'll leave the links below for the CNN video, the actual article itself, and as well as the, the secondary article that I found in the Telegraph talking about how dinosaur DNA could not survive. 
They're constantly backtracking what they tell us. We are relearning and redefining science itself and what it all means. So what do you guys think about this? What do you think will be the outcome of them finding this dinosaur DNA? Do you think it will be a leap in the right direction for humanity? Or do you think that this could be a step in a backwards direction for humanity? Apparently, especially I should say, because we already apparently came from these beings long ago. Are we just gonna go right back to where we started from or are we gonna learn and grow and evolve from the mistakes of our past and not make the same mistakes in our future. Okay guys, well I hope this was helpful for all of you today. I will leave links in the description box below and I will be back with more videos throughout the week to read some more of the Diary of an Asset book. I have many more Mandela effects to talk to you guys about as well. So I hope you're all doing well. Have a fabulous week. Happy 1212 and happy full moon tomorrow. The energies will be intense, so be very nice to each other. Okay, hope you're all well. Take care, and thanks for listening to the news that you need, because if they won't report it, then I will.